So, um, we are here with Terry Toyu. I think in the salsa world a lot of people already know you and uh, see what we get out of this. I'm gonna try to get your story out into the world. So, let's see. So, how did it first started for you? For uh, How did you start dancing salsa, for example? We all have a story. Yeah. And I just did a little bit of a my story on Facebook and posted it. And so, I'm really interested to hear your story. So mine is kind of uh, funny because I really went to the salsa by Azad because um, I was uh, responsible of the key of a room in my uh, neighborhood uh -huh. where um, people were able to practice or to make some activities and I was the owner of this, uh, not of this room but of the key. Right. The key was uh, at my place. Like a and, gym? Uh, a gym or not something? A, but a free space. Free space, yes. okay. And uh, a salsa teacher came to my city so a friend of mine came to ring uh, my bell and to tell me that they need the key uh -huh. to, uh, to, uh, to let the salsa teacher teach. So I went to, to this room and I look what the salsa teacher was, uh, was doing with his partner. And I get shocked. I was like, my God, I need to know how to do this. I was dancing um, break dance and a hip hop thing before uh -huh. and I get really touched by his way to dance. So the, the, he was just there for an exhibition to uh -huh. show what he was able to do and the next the, the week after the start class okay uh, the class start and um i was there okay. with my uh, with my not dancing shoes <laughs> but my town shoes <laughs> and i was already ready to take my first salsa lesson so this is how it works how, how old were you at that point uh, 19 years old and uh, was it a lady or a guy teacher no that was a guy, a guy that was a guy with, where, where, uh, where, was from? where was he uh, from he was from guadeloupe too from guadeloupe. ireland so you're from Guadeloupe. Yes. And uh, so what kind of salsa scene did they have back then? So 19, when you were 19, it was all around, uh, and it was that was, around 2010. That was in 2001. No, just... <laughs> <laughs> no, that was in 2001. I was just sure if you wanted to reveal your... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in Guadeloupe, they, they had a really... Uh, really huge salsa scene but yeah, that's like style, you can imagine like they, they, we had something like more than uh, one or two thousand people dancing at this wow. moment that was really a fashion and um, the thing which were funny is that there were no re real style of salsa right. because everybody was mixing mm -hmm. cuban and, uh, and new york and uh, okay. and uh, la style so everything was a big mix mm -hmm. so when they were dancing they were teaching and dancing salsa Right. Actually, so you could find a lot of uh, Cuban thing online and thing like this. So that was that was pretty interesting. Wow! People didn't really know about uh, the, different the different style styles. of salsa. So how do you think New York style? Of course, Cubans probably because it's close. But how did people from New York or LA? How did that influence come to Guadeloupe? From, you because think? Um, Guadeloupe is a French island, and mm -hmm. a lot of people were going to Paris. Mm -hmm. So they they. They took a lot of lessons from teachers in Paris who was already good in uh, LA mm -hmm. and a bit of New York. So they, when they came back to Guadeloupe, they came with this style. In the right. So uh, there they were, were already like, wow, a lot of Cuban I... people in Guadeloupe. So everything Got just mixed. made a big mix. And people who take lessons with a lot of with uh, some teachers uh -huh. just get their own style, like my teacher, right. and uh, they they teach. They was teaching what they knew. Right. And right. Uh, so they was giving us the thing uh, in uh, kind of every direction, but mm -hmm. that was really, really good because we didn't have a, any, any difficulties to one style and another style after right. because we knew a little bit of everything. Yeah, I think that's the beauty of salsa. Yeah, that you can sure. have, you can create your own style and have own style and of that's, course that's definitely the point. express the way you feel the music. And, uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, what about, um, so you were 19, so and you saw these uh, people and you had luckily had the key to that space and you saw what was going on, you went to the first class and then you just, of course you had that little dance background that probably helped yeah. for you to get some. So, so then there was parties already in quite a loop and yeah, events. But during and one year I just took uh, classes mm -hmm. and uh, the chance that I had is that uh, in my uh, high school, the, the previous high school, because I just, uh, I've been graduate. Mm -hmm. Um, when I hang out from the school, I heard that they have they had salsa lesson. Mm -hmm. So my thing is that I was going every Wednesday to my high school where I wasn't anymore mm -hmm. to take a salsa lesson for free. Mm. So I had the class with my teacher, another class with another lady called Gladys mm -hmm. who, uh, in a, during the week. So I have two salsa lessons, and I was pretty happy of this. And I didn't know about parties or thing like this. Right. I was just practicing for one year the basics and the thing like this right and at the end of this year I went to my first salsa party mm. 
So they, they had a regular salsa party in Guadeloupe every Wednesday on every Friday night. Right. And uh, this is where I, I did my class. This okay. is where I, I really learned how to dance, how to enjoy. The, the Latin club, I right. remember this. Uh, that was uh, where I had my best experiences in salsa because this is where I met all the Guadeloupean dancers who were going to this club to dance. And this is where I really learned uh, my basics and my really uh, my own flow. Yeah, I think a lot of people, uh, what I found is that uh, in our school and in everything is people think that just going to classes is enough. But really, when, if you really want to become good, you have to practice. You have uh, to just the place where you learn the most in the, is the in the party because you have to put what you learn in situation. You have to hang, uh, make it hang out from yourself. Right. And this is after this that you can say that you know the moves right. and that the moves are, are, um, they are yours. Yes. That's, yes. that's, the, that's the other thing to do. And for every people, I, I had a friend who spent something like two or three years of uh, taking classes without going to parties mm -hmm. because he was, he, he's a, he was a really, um, really, uh, I don't know, perfectionist guy. Right, right. He, he was he like, I won't go to a salsa party before being good in salsa. Right, right. But I told him, <laughs> don't worry because you will take a lot of salsa classes, but when you will go to the party, it will be the same than everybody. Yes, yes. You will get, uh, you will get uh, sweaty uh -huh. and you won't be able to lead the ladies properly. You will apologize something like 100 times <laughs> during the dance. But it's uh, the first dance have to be shitty, and that's yes, it. Yes, yes. And yes. after this, you can really, uh, you can really enjoy. And mm -hmm. when you get used with it, you can really right. know what is what is uh, a salsa party. How to invite a lady, how to dance with her, yes. how to make her enjoy the dance. Right. This is the thing that you will learn in the party. Yeah, I think that was the biggest thing for me that helped me progress was to just to accept for myself that I don't have to be perfect to just go enjoy. Yeah, yeah, and really, sure. when once I really realized that. Really, if I suck, nobody's really actually even looking at me. <laughs> they that's are, it, that's it. And, and if they are looking at somebody, they are looking at the girl. Whether it's a guy, he's looking at the girl, or the girl, they're looking at the girl. So nobody's really paying attention yeah, to me sure. as a guy, for sure. But ladies might be a little tougher. But uh, yeah, then once I realized that, I just went after being in the class and taking and just going practicing what I learned from the class. And that's how, one of the big things that helped me improve, for sure, also. but. So then, uh, so, but I heard you said before that you moved to France at some point. Uh, yeah, Paris. in 2006. So, so, so at that point you had been practicing already like yeah, five years? Yeah, I had five years of salsa and uh, I had a, um, a proposal from uh, the owner of a big uh, salsa school in Paris mm. uh, to come in her school to join her team mm -hmm. because um, one of her best dancers left the school so she was searching for new dancers right. and uh, she told me that like she knows that it's really hard to come in Paris and just leave uh, by um, the dancing mm -hmm. she's uh, allowing me to come and teach in her school too mm -hmm. like this uh, I will be able to uh, to uh, gain money and to keep mm -hmm. living mm -hmm. stay in Paris and uh, to join a team so mm. I was a military policeman in the past okay when she made me this proposal but I didn't take that much time to uh, to say yes uh, in three days after, I went to see my captain and I told him my, uh, <laughs> my intention and he told me, you know, um, Tolio, you're young, you are, you don't have, you're not married, you don't have children, so I think that it's the right time for you to do something like this. And if you mess up, you will be able to come back to the military, poli uh, military police after this. Okay. And uh, you don't have to be scared. You're young, so just do your thing. Right. Maybe it's work. It will work. It will work. And um, the chance that I had is that it works. Yes. So you came from went from a military policeman to a to a, to a, to a, to a, a salsa professional. Yes. Yes. Professional yes. Salsa. Yeah. Yes. So after this, uh, when I went to Paris, I went to this school. It wasn't that um, that strong. But uh, they had a lot of students right. because of the advertising that they're doing. They, it's, it's really one of the biggest schools in South South Paris. Mm -hmm. Not because of their level, but really because of the amount of people that they have. Right, right. And um, this is where I met Cecil. She was a teacher in this, uh, this ah, school. Okay. And we started dancing together mm -hmm. there. So I was dancing in the, in the school as a, as a dancer of the company. And at the same time, I was hanging out every night with uh, friends and Cecil to... Uh, to, uh, to enjoy my salsa, right. and uh, I met uh, Mike from uh, U Tribe, yes, yes. who uh, made me a proposal something like two months after uh -huh. to uh, join his team. Okay, so you went to okay, I didn't know that. So you so, were U Tribe. Yeah, so that was for me. Uh, 
great occasion. Right, of I course. was in the middle of 2006 and I decided, okay, let's go. What do you think about the experience of... So now you were already teaching uh, after like five, six years and you had progressed, obviously, uh, a great mound. You had a passion for it and in Guadeloupe you probably practiced and trained hard and learned and went to the parties. And, and, and so what did you, what do you think uh, the, did the performing team or the performance experience with you tribe did that help you develop yourself as a dancer or...? Ba basically, um, the, being in you tribe team helped me in a way because uh, that was my first congress experience. Mm. When I was dancing in the ACES team, we were performing only in parties, mm -hmm. but not in, not in congresses. And right. with you, Tribe, we went to Geneva, to Monaco, and to some places like this, and I met a lot of uh, artists. Mm -hmm. So uh, it helped me to get some connections mm -hmm. that I use after mm -hmm. when, I, uh, when I moved from you, Tribe in December 2007. Right. The thing is that um, one of the, my dance partner in you, Tribe actually, mm -hmm. Audrey, were the um, dearest um, artistic director of the Marseille Salsa Congress mm. and uh, when she left for the for, from the company before me she told me uh, Terry if one day you have a choreography with Cecile for me it would be a pleasure to uh, let you perform in Marseille right so when we moved from your tribe uh, we thought maybe we can we can do something yeah so we okay. made one show and we colored to, to know if it will be uh, um, possible to perform in Marseille right. and um, one week after, she answered us and she, uh, and she told us, yes, it's possible. And uh, so we want you for two shows and two workshops. But we had only one show. <laughs> Something like five weeks before the, the Congress. <laughs> you were like, oh. Like, we just start. We didn't say no, but we have only one show. We say yes. <laughs> yeah. And we start practicing on, uh, on uh, the show who uh, made us famous. That's, okay. really f and that's really funny because the show that we had wasn't that good. Right. And... Uh, the, when we uh, when she asked us that, we start to work on an, another show that we... Was that the cha-cha? Exactly. That's the cha-cha. Exactly. Because I told you already, but um, the listeners didn't hear that. I, I was in San Francisco at that time. And uh, then I, you know, there was a San Francisco Salsa Congress. It was huge. It was 2008, right? Yes, that was 2008. 2008. November 2008. And I was living in San Francisco, and there was not many people at that point that coming from Europe... Yes to US, much less to all the way to San Francisco. So it was a very like, uh, like I was in the Congress 2007, but then 2008, I was like, all right, cool. Some people from Paris. And I had no idea of what was going on in Europe because I spent yeah. all my time in US. And and then I remember I seen the cha-cha routine. I'm like, okay, shit, this is yeah, amazing. That, that was one of our masterpieces. Yeah, this was amazing. And then not only that, what, what really I remember seeing from you that uh, was when I see you guys social dancing, I'm like, oh my God, what, what do they eat for breakfast in Paris? <laughs> this guy hits all the breaks and accents and uh, has all kind of cool moves. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, holy crap, I need to go because because I've been completely blind of what was happening in Europe. And yeah. so most of the people in the U.S. didn't know that we had no. salsa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, first yeah. time I went to Puerto Rico, that Much was Much less that it's so high level. Yeah, the first time I went to uh, to Puerto Rico uh -huh. was in 2005. <laughs> that was for the competition, but uh, because I was competition, uh, competing for Guadeloupe, right. I was Guadeloupean champion. Ah, oh, okay, right. And uh, I went to, to Puerto Rico and uh, they told me, yes, uh, That's tough where, competition. where do you come from? And I said, from Guadeloupe. And they were like, Guadeloupe? <laughs> I was in the Caribbean, I didn't even know <laughs> yeah, I, I was never. Guadeloupe. So they couldn't expect, when I came to San, uh, to San Francisco in 2008, and they were asking me, where do you come from? I said, Paris. They were like, Paris? Like, they have salsa there? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, you have to know something. The Paris, from 2004 to 2006, yes. was actually the best place in the world to dance in social. Yeah, it's a social scene. I remember, yeah. I was actually in 2003. When I had not even started my own, like you start, I started salsa 2004, 2005. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I remember going to Paris just to visit for fun, for vacation, 2003, and I already heard about salsa. And I went to some of the parties. There's this one place where you go. It's this, uh, it's this Latin cafe or something. And you go underneath. You go these stairs yeah, that, under. That was the that was the Latina cafe. Yes. Latina cafe, yes, right? And was, I went there, and I'm like, Les Champs Elysees. Yes, yeah. right there in the center. 
and I'm like, holy sh and I think it was Moas who I'm seeing there because there's this one guy yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> who was better than everybody else <laughs> and this is guy who does all these moves yeah, and I'm just looking at uh, At this moment in Paris Could have been Moas? Really, uh, it could, it could have been, could have been because there was but one we, guy We had a really um, huge scene a really a lot of good dancers yeah, We had I'm Falco like... who is now uh, in Madrid We had uh, Lei, Sofian uh, Ozzy, Sofo, Mike, Dom, Mab. Yeah, yeah. The the salsa men's there yeah. was more, uh, um, part of the best dancer in the world. Yes, so yes. when I went there in 2006, I didn't have that level. Right. I was watching. Like this, <laughs> like, oh, well, I was spending my night watching at them dance because that was just marvelous. Yes, the level that yes. they had was uh, something that I couldn't expect. Right. So really. I can imagine that when you went there, those guys was already there and uh, they were doing crazy yeah. stuff in the, the Yeah, like night. 2003 already, they were like... Yeah, yeah. They, they, and I'm they like, start almost at the same time shit. than me, but practicing in Guadeloupe and practicing in Paris is not Different. the same. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. So for sure they grow yeah. faster than me because the uh, scene was bigger course, and they were able to Inspiration and the energy. And they already and had a congress from Sar Sabor in the, in yes. the past. And that was one of the best congress in the world, mm -hmm. and they were um, uh, bringing people from everywhere. So mm -hmm. they had um, they had the chance to take classes with a lot of uh, great dancers. Yeah, yeah but that cool. that's what I was going to ask you. Is that <clears throat> like a lot of people probably wonder because uh, uh, you know you're now a salsa star in the in the, in the scene. <laughs> Well, but uh, like especially what people I think uh, appreciate and what I certainly appreciate watching your in your dance is the your ability to know the music and uh, accent the music and play with the music and of course then add it with your sort of charisma and personal style and all the cool moves you have. Then uh, like is I think a lot of people might wonder like how can I become so good? A dancer also in terms of expressing uh, the there music. There is a secret for this. There yeah, okay, what's secret. your secret? What's your the, secret? The secret is just about listening music. Yeah. My my thing when I started to dance salsa, I was doing something that I don't know if people were able to do it. Uh -huh. First, I was waking up when I, I didn't had any work when I started salsa. I was uh, um, cleaning my house. Right. The full house right. from the morning till the afternoon yes. with salsa music. Yes, I think yeah, so. I'll, I have two salsa music, two CDs, uh -huh. but I was playing them every day. Yes. And when the song, when I loved the song, I, w I was able to listen to the song three hours straight in repeat like this. Right. So I was kind of strange, <laughs> <laughs> but basically it this helped me you. to understand the structure of salsa. Yes. yes. So now, uh, for me, uh, salsa music. Um, there is a sentence that I love to say is that if you know 100 salsa music, basically you, you know 10,000 salsa music. Yeah, because it's the same structure yes. and, and patterns so you can and breaks. You can, exactly, so you can understand how it's coming. Right, right, right. And Even though you don't know the song, you already can probably accent most of the music even after that. Another thing is that I, know, I think that it's coming only from me and maybe other people get the same. I know that students of... I, I, am, I went to a trip with a student of mine who had exactly the same thing. I'm re, uh, I can remember music very easily. Mm -hmm. So when I hear music, something like three, three four times, mm -hmm. I'll be able to sing the song at the same time that I'm listening to the music. Okay, right. So if the music is not there, I cannot, I, I'm not able to do it. But if the music, music is, there, is there, I can't do it. Right, okay. And for me, it's uh, like um, kind of easy to sing a song that I'm listening at the same time. So okay. dancing for me, it's like the same thing than singing because it's okay. coming out from me. So my dancing is like singing the song. Okay. I'm trying oh, to interpret your body. The song. Exactly, because I'm not a good singer. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's real. Look the way they are. It's because I didn't sing. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great though. So the key is really to listen to music. I yeah. think and I think practice also then your sure. your sure. body to be able to to ex, you know, interpret it. But I think a lot of people miss sometimes the amount of dancing and listening of music you do like if you yeah. A measure it in the hours and people time. People uh, are thinking that it just felt on me. Yes, like, you, but, like, uh, yeah, like, and workshops of course help, but like you have to put that stuff into practice. Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> like you have to listen full music and you have to uh, make a little bit of work, even if you don't know the name of the artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is really bad? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 ha you really have to uh, 
to be able to know some music and yes. to know them by heart uh, and right. to have like favorite music, favorite songs and artists, to go search yeah. a little bit further in every music yes. that you're listening. So who are your favorite artists? Uh, basically I love a lot. Yes. Every time I'm like saying, oh this is my song, but for 100 songs. So yeah, yeah. I, I don't have really favorite artists, but I have a, um, a bunch of them. Yes. Like every every people of the Fanny All Star are yes. kind of my favorite, and uh, I'm a, a huge fan of Mark Anthony, Victor Manuel, and a lot of uh, romantic. Roman, uh, romantica singers because basically I love to dance this kind of song because they have a, even if they don't have the the two or three meanings that the other song had, they um, the singer are giving you. Uh, some power. If you hear Mark Anthony sing, mm -hmm. I'm dancing on the song who is already powerful because he has a really good orchestra, mm -hmm. but his voice mm -hmm. is like a, another instrument. Yes, so it's it like is, bringing it me yes, forward. Yes. And, and something that I love to do is to try to give back to the song what the song is giving me. Mm. And with this kind of song it's really easy because mm -hmm. you really know easily the meaning of what they, what they are singing. Right. So it's easier to give back to the song. Mm. That's beautiful, yeah. So that you sort of, uh, yeah, yeah. So you see it as this kind of give and take relationship yeah. with the band, artist. But basically, Ruben Blades, Ribarreto, uh, any of them, yeah, any yeah. of them. There, there is a lot of uh, good artists who made something like two or great songs uh -huh. and they have something like 30, 40 songs. So I cannot say it is my favorite artist. Yes, yes. But the song that he made are yes. part of my favorite. Right. Cool. This is already amazing. Good stuff. It's fun to fun to hear your story. I have a couple more. Like uh, then, how did you uh, like breaking into this performance uh, world? Uh, and one of them, you just shared the story. Somebody asked you to do a show and or two shows, and yes. you went and did it. And then, uh, and it was really that cha cha. Then right away, that sort of put you the, 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 on the, the map, sort of speak. The chance that we had is uh, in 2008 was. Um, Fa uh, YouTube wasn't that famous. Yes, yes. And it was coming. Right. So uh, I put the video of the first show on YouTube. Okay. And um, one week after, we had a recompense of uh, on YouTube because it was one of the sh uh, the video most uh, will get the most view in one week. Okay, okay. Because it just become uh, kind of viral for for what YouTube was in the past. Yes. Now, uh, 1,000 view in the one week was a lot. Yes, yes. So, the thing is that every people were speaking about the video or thing like this, and a lot of organizers seen this video without knowing us. Right. And they saw the video and they say, I want them. Yes. Even if you didn't know where, uh, who we were. <laughs> yeah. So, that was, that was kind of funny because we start like this with an um, organizer. We saw the video mm -hmm. and uh, contact us on, uh, on Facebook and uh, by mail to know if we can come to the event. And it start little like, um, by little like this. So do you do the choreographies together? Uh, yeah, together, 50-50. Like, uh, I, uh, I think many people might know, but uh, as artists you probably know that I think that one of the hardest things is to find a good song for that's, a show That's or my point actually. <laughs> so how do, you, how do you come about, like how do you search for ideas? Do you have some kind of, like do you just listen to punch of music and also have the focus what would be good for show or competition? Or Because I think, personally, I think you have a great sense of like, uh, ideas for shows and choreographies and, and, and music uh, so like I'm interested to know also for myself ba like how do you come out the way we are listening to music a lot to see what uh, the music is telling us mm -hmm. when we listen to music we know if uh, we can do a story mm -hmm. on the music if uh, which kind of move we will do on the music wh which color of the costume because the music have this color you mm -hmm. can listen mm -hmm. to Beethoven yes one of our masterpieces yes. too yeah. when we listen to the music we know about the black Right. Yeah, it was beautiful. The black yeah, was uh, was the color of this song because yes. it's really dark. Yes. It, it, you can you can f um, find the color of the um, of the suit mm -hmm. from the song. You yes. can find the the way that you will uh, wear because for Silencio, mm -hmm. we had the, something really um, in the ground hurt. Yes, and I feel like this. And that's one day, that's yeah, the yeah, cha cha. That's <laughs> and one day, um, I was uh, having fun with my uh, big jacket at the end of the show, and I started moving, and I saw the move of the jacket, and I was like, "We should wear a jacket for the show." And she looked at me and she said, "Okay," and she started drawing the jacket. Oh, cool! Because okay. uh, Cecilia is the designer of every right. costume that we have. Right. And she started drawing the jacket, and after this, uh, 
we uh, we had the so the the suit for silencio with the bee jacket and it's beautiful like this. Yeah, it's and nice. it's something that the people re remind yeah because this suit was kind of particular for the past because people were uh, used to wear um salsa dancing shoot yes, it's like yes. uh you know the combination for the salsa with really shiny or thing like this <laughs> and they were not used to see this kind yeah, of like uh, a, yeah, dark yeah. because for silencio you couldn't wear something shiny no nah, of course the song wasn't um, yes. telling something like this and this is what we are trying to do every time and to create the show actually mm -hmm. when we have like the 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 direction mm -hmm. where we are going like the general idea and yes. the story and we are taking uh, the first part of the music mm -hmm. listening to it like this and try to uh, create from this part we mm -hmm. are not taking mm -hmm. care of the other part you just, and just we are focus like on that part part by part mm -hmm. part by part we are do you do it do you do it on an order though or do you take parts here and there no, usually in the order mm -hmm. this is a, this is our way to do i know that there is a lot of people who are like okay i will work on the on the shines first and after but Basically, we don't have any shine part or yes, partner yes, works yes, part. Yes. We can do both of them right. in one part. Yes, yes. Depend of what the music is telling yes. us at the moment. And so, for the for the movement ideas for the music, like, do you usually uh, get the inspiration from the music and then try to fit movements that fit the music, or do you sometimes do you sometimes have movements or created movements or ideas for movements and then see how it could fit the music? We are, we are doing it in a, every way. Both you ways? Wanna, yes. You want to mean that um, sometimes we, uh, we are thinking about a way of movement, so we are working on the, on the movement without music, mm -hmm. and after we are trying to put the movement on the music. But mm -hmm. most of the time, we are listening to music to see which kind of movement we can go with it. Mm -hmm. And another thing is that I'm looking for a lot of show, but not salsa shows, mm -hmm. for right. West Coast, right. uh, Lambazook, and a lot of different kind of hip hop, mm -hmm. a lot of kind of, uh, of shows to have some ideas from them mm -hmm. and to try to put it in my way. Yeah, I think there's a lot of things, a lot of people. Uh, don't realize that you have, uh, for example, especially in your show, you have uh, influences from so many things, and that, that, and also the point that in even in the salsa world, most of the cool ideas was not created by us salsa dancers. Yeah, it was already done by yeah. indie hoppers or swing sure. dancers. Sure. Or and sometimes we recreate those things. Yeah, and we are thinking and we are thinking that it's coming from us, <laughs> but it, it, it does somebody exist from years. Yeah. You go to 1950, and somebody were doing sure. the tornado already exactly, way exactly. back when. So that's that's really funny. So this is very very or hip hop. So yeah. it's like so yeah. that's why I think that it's really important to watch a lot of video of every mm -hmm. kind of dancing. Yeah. And, and to try appreciate to take every kind of dancing. Yeah, sure, and sure. Music and styles. I, and I, I wouldn't be able to dance every every kind of dancing on every kind of of, course, of music, yeah. but. I can find the good thing in, every in everything. Yes. yes. So yes. that's why I, yes. I'm, I'm able to say, okay, wow, I love this move. Mm -hmm. Let's try to see if it could work on the salsa song or in the song that I will use. Because mostly the last song that we use are not salsa song anymore. Yeah. We, uh, the last one was the Latin jazz, uh -huh. and uh, we were really more jazzy than salsa. Right, right. You couldn't uh, like count one, two, three, five, jazz. six, yeah, seven yeah. on it. Yeah, necessary. and uh, the next one, the one who is coming, actually. Yeah, I heard about. I heard about. I heard about your something new. Strange. I don't know. <laughs> are you able to reveal? Uh, <laughs> reveal any secret song? Yeah, I, I heard. I, I told what you, I heard. But I won't do it on video. Oh, this. Hey. Well, I, I say this that it's uh, it's definitely uh, like something that surprised me even. Exactly. <laughs> even knowing what you already done, it surprised me. Even, so even me, I'm surprised <laughs> about it. <laughs> so so having said that, I think uh, when. When the show comes out wherever it's gonna be performed first time i'm telling you guys you better go see it and support it because what's coming out it i don't will know be in september in the in the corazon Latino let's, just, event. let's just say if we're not i'm not sure if the salsa world is is, is we'll see if it if it's ready yeah, yeah I, I really don't know how the people will react <laughs> really but don't no, know. no that's that's true but basically when i hear the song i was like i really want to do something on this because now Songs are telling me, okay, dance on me, dance on me, yes, and I'm yes, like, yes. wow, but that's huge. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know what you I mean. I don't think yes, it, uh, it's that like, I will be able to do it. Right, but right. More I listen to the song, them. more yes, the song yes. is like, let's do it, let's like do for it. Me, for me, some kind of like a rumba, bolero, and like, to, like oh, I, the call, it calls for me, but yeah. then it's like, 
to feel the movements to it. It's really, it's really hard. That's, yeah, that's yeah. why I'm like... But that's how you grow, I think. Yeah, sure. And challenge yourself to, to, to learn new styles, exactly. develop yourself as a dancer, to appreciate different this styles, is, this is different styles the movement, thing. then bringing it to your style exactly. and improving the salsa in general. The salsa world in general who push also the boundaries of developing their sort of core style of itself yep. but and you you were mentioning Yamule and Adolfo who are really uh, classic in the style in mm -hmm. the salsa style but they reach a level that to to be able to um, to reach this level mm -hmm. um, I don't know it is not the real sentence that I want to say if you are doing this kind of uh, salsa uh -huh. you have to get this level right to uh, to slap the people who are watching the show and right. this is actually what they are doing excuse me Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> this is this is actually what they are doing. They they put this salsa at a level that you cannot you just cannot expect. So right. every time that you see a show of them, you're like, whoa, whoa, oh my yeah, god, oh yeah, my god. Yeah. This is for me uh, how to make salsa shows. You yes. know what I mean? That it's really good to make um, to make salsa shows and use the salsa music to do shows and things like right. this. But basically, if you uh, it will be a, re a little bit hard, but for me, if you don't have this level, you better don't do it. Because <laughs> yeah, people yeah. are used to see people dancing yes, in social, yes, so if yes. it's to go on stage to do social, it yeah. won't, touch, it yeah, won't like, touch them. Yeah, like because because that's like, oh, let me see if I'm understanding right, is that you, it's like, it's all, it's like taking the salsa social dancing to uh, the highest possible level almost. And if you don't, have that ability to take it to that level it's better not to do it as a show Exa okay, exactly social dancing is exactly but as a show Ex it's Sal tough to compete for me a salsa show uh -huh. really mean that i will the show should blow me away right, right. and this is what they are doing right uh, yamule and uh, adolfo uh, there is there is others but i, I keep those two yes, because yes, yes. for me when i saw uh, the the um, the team of Adolfo or the team of Yamule dancing, right. I know that e even if I'm far, I'll try to see the show yes. because I know that every time I will learn a little bit more yes, of and uh, I, will, uh, I will say, wow, really they, they're strong. In their way to work, in their way to do the thing, for me that's, right. that's what I can uh, call the salsa show. Uh, that's, that's why. It's I have, I have a one final question. Okay. Then we then we're done. I know cool. you gotta get practice. So I really appreciate Thank really you very your much. time. Thanks. Because uh, you know a lot of people don't know that it's t it's a lot of work. These kind of festivals and you're like busting out, partying, dancing, and you still need to develop yourself as a dancer. And I know you have a rehearsal with Cecilia. She's teaching workshop right yeah, now. Yeah. Then you have a workshop right after. So after this. it's hard to put on your work like with this kind of schedule. So so really thanks for for all thanks the time. But I have thanks one. One more, like, is that do you have some inspirational dancers that you looked up to when you started? Like, who were the inspirations for you, or is, are those still the people you recommend other people to look for? Or? Uh, basically, I learned to dance uh, a lot with the video of my and Salsa competition of 2001. No way! 2002. I just said that on my story. <laughs> you know who? You know the video that was biggest inspiration for me was Liz Lira and Alexa Silva oh, dancing. Yeah. Yeah, but there was no great. videos. At but all. for me, I, that, I, I had Rudy Sales and Jennifer, who yes. were great. Uh, Ovi Small. Oh uh, my God! That they, gotta be. Yeah, I, I was like. crazy. Victor and Gabby, <laughs> and I was yeah. love watching those videos every day. Yes, and uh, when yes, I started to dance, yes, that was a really uh, great that. source of inspiration for me. Time. So no, that, that was. But basically, actually, I don't have one uh, one favorite yes. dancer. I have yes. a lot. Yes, yes. yes and yes. my style is coming from this. It's like. Uh, people are saying, yeah, Terry got a good style, but basically my style is a composite of, of a lot of style yes. that I love, like Michael Fons, Adolfo yes, one more yes. time, Juan Matos, and a lot of a lot of guys, even uh, Dom from the Ramark, who is a good friend right. of mine. I love to see him dance, so I will take some of him yes. to, to, and like, I'm using a lot of everybody, mm -hmm. yes. it looks like me. Yes, yes. But yes, basically, yes. it is my choice. It's like I'm in a store and I'm like, I will take a little bit of this, yes, a little bit. Yes. And this is how to, to make your own style with the right. thing that you love and the thing that you feel that you can make yours. Yes. Yes, and that's yes. it. It's not really one, one, uh, one dancer that I'm like, I want to dance like him and try to follow and do every, everything yes. like him. I'm trying to go further than this. Yes, but I think it's a good, I, I, and I think it's a good to, for what I'd like to do and what I hear what you say was that 
you try to like learn all that you can from that one person you like and then you want to do the same with another person and then you choose what you want to use yeah, to yeah, create sure, your sure. own. Because for me there is not only one good dancer in the world. Yes, of so course. why why I will uh, say, okay, I will take a... It's like you're in a restaurant, mm -hmm. in a buffet, and you're staying on you with the pastas. Okay, I love <laughs> this pasta. There is pizza, there is rice, there yes, is a lot yes, of things. Yes. So, uh, you know, when you when you have The wider this, you can develop yourself, yes, the better. Just, yeah. I don't ask you to take a lot of everything, just a little bit of everything to fill your plate. Yes. And like this, you will, ha you will have a great Own meal flavor. without... Yeah, that's it, that's it. Thanks, man, that's awesome. Thanks so to you. Let me ask you one more. The how do you, how could people find you? What's the best way? Do you have a website? Or uh, on my website, uh, Salyasa.info. I know your Facebook profiles are already full, probably. Uh, all of them. The second one is still <laughs> have some one. space. <laughs> yes. So go check. The, it's a Terry Salsa Tata, Alliance. Uh, Alianza. 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 Terry Salsa Alianza. Uh, uh, in uh, Facebook. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, I'll, 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 we, we can wrote, write it there. And then it's uh, you have a website. It's yes, I have my website. It's salsalianza.info. That info. And uh, and yes, and by mail. And then, you, then, at then if you go to a festival, they're probably there. Yeah. <laughs> we, are, we are mostly traveling almost every weekend. So we yeah. are we are really happy so of the chance that we are. Going? We are going to Pune in India okay. next week. So. So India, you are up for a treat. Thanks so much, man. Thanks it was a great you. interview. And uh, I'll still see you tonight at the party. No problem. Yeah.